Andrew here from Go Green Compost, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build an easy to make DIY worm composting bin, just like this one. And you might also hear these referred to as vermicompost bins. Now, if you're new to composting, this is going to be a great video for you because this worm composting bin is extremely easy to make. It's very inexpensive. All you really need are three five gallon buckets and a drill. That's it. And then a few compostable items to serve as bedding for your worms. Now, if you're an experienced composter, but you haven't seen a bin like this before, you should also stick around and check this out because these bins are very inexpensive. They're easy to make. So if you want to scale up your composting and increase your uh, capability for vermicompost or your ability to process food waste, you can build a couple of these or as many as you like fairly easily and uh, you can scale up your composting in a big way. So if you're an experienced composter, stick around too because this is going to be a great video for you as well. So all you're going to need to build this bin is a five gallon bucket lid and then three five gallon buckets just like this one. Now one of the buckets, the bottom bucket in the bin, you don't need to do anything to. This is it. It's done. It's a five gallon bucket. That's all you need. The other two buckets, what you're going to want to do is take a drill and just drill a hole in a grid pattern like this on the bottom. Uh, I used a 3 16 inch drill bit, so that's what I'm going to recommend, but it doesn't really matter, it just as long as it's big enough for a worm to pass through. That's the uh, gold standard here, so don't get uh, too concerned about what size drill bit you're using, just make sure that it's large enough for a worm to pass through, because the way that this bin works is it's an upward migration worm bin. So the bottom bin here is just going to serve as basically a reservoir to catch any excess moisture that's going to drip through the buckets. And then first you'll start off by taking one of these buckets and you'll fill it up with your worms and your bedding and any food scraps that you want to compost. And we'll get to more of that in just a moment. I'm going to show you exactly how to set this bin up here shortly. Uh, I have right behind me here everything you need to do it and I'll go over each item in detail in just a moment. So stick around. But uh, the basic idea is you start off with one of these full of worms and compost and you stack it in the bottom bucket which serves as the reservoir and you can even at that point just put your lid on and let your worms do their thing. Now once they've basically finished off all the food scraps that you've loaded up in there and you don't want to add any more, you have uh, enough material in there, you just want to let it let the worms finish it up and turn it into castings that you can harvest, you're going to take your next bucket and you'll just put it in on top of that waste and you will fill this bucket with bedding and food scraps and things that worms will like and the idea is that as they finish the food that's in this lower bucket they will begin to crawl through these holes to get at the food scraps that you put in the top bucket and at that point once your worms have migrated upward you can remove the bottom bucket and harvest the castings and then you can either just add that to your garden as a soil amendment because worm castings are amazing they're a great way to boost the microbial activity in your soil um, very good soil amendment or you can even expand their microbial content significantly by creating worm tea uh, but that's a topic for another video just know that there's a lot of benefits to having worm castings that you'll be able to harvest from this compost bin just as a quick side note before you run out and buy some five gallon buckets from the hardware store I would check with any local restaurants or uh, food supply companies, anybody who might have a surplus of five gallon buckets that they might uh, allow a local composter to upcycle. These are actually soy sauce buckets from Wicked Bao. So shout out to Wicked Bao, best Asian street food here in North Florida. If you visit Fernandina Beach or Amelia Island, definitely check them out. And while you're at it, while you're asking these restaurants if they've got any five gallon buckets you could upcycle. You might ask them if they have any food scraps as well. You'd be surprised, I think, at how ecologically conscious a lot of small business owners are, and uh, they don't like seeing all those food scraps go to waste, so they'd be happy to support local gardeners. Especially, hey, if you're gardening, maybe you can uh, return the favor by giving them some fresh produce. But I'll leave that for you to uh, discuss with them. Just think about upcycling some buckets before you run out and spend five bucks a piece on five gallon buckets. There may be some good food grade buckets you can get for free. And like I said, to prepare these two buckets, all you need to do is drill a grid-like pattern here, and then you'll also want to drill a couple rows of holes up around the top like this, and that's basically just to allow for airflow and to allow any excess humidity to flow out of the bucket. 
depending on where you will be storing your bucket, you may also want to drill some air holes in your lid here. Um, I'm going to be keeping this composter outdoors near my house. It will be in a semi-sheltered location, but if it rains hard, there will be rain hitting the top of this uh, bucket, so I'm not going to drill air holes in mine because I don't want to drown my worms, but if you are putting your bucket in a place that's covered or sheltered from rainfall or you need additional airflow for whatever reason, if you're having humidity problems in your bin, you can also go ahead and drill some airflow holes here in the lid of your bin. Once you've got your vermicompost bin assembled like so, you can actually go ahead and get it started with worms. Now, all of these ingredients are pretty easy to come by, except for the worms themselves. If you have a friend who's already doing some worm composting, or maybe you have some local gardeners or something like that you can get in touch with and network with, you might be able to get some red wiggler worms to fill up your bin with from them. In my case, I have an established worm factory worm bin, so I've got some worms right here that I'm going to go ahead and start this bin with. But if you don't have a local source of worms, that's okay, don't worry. You can get started like I did. I ordered a batch of red wigglers on Amazon from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm over a year ago, and those worms are still doing really well in my worm factory worm bin. So you can actually have the worms sent to you by mail. This is what Uncle Jim sends you. It's basically just a big ball of worms. So if you do go ahead and order those, on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to the exact listing I use so you can make sure you're getting some good quality worms. Make sure you've got your composter set up in advance and make sure you have all your bedding materials set up because uh, those worms when they arrive they're going to need to go somewhere. I don't think you want them staying in your guest bedroom so have a composter assembled and ready to go when you order those worms. And, you know I really like Uncle Jim's brand. They even make Uncle Jim look somewhat worm-like himself, as you can see up here from the Uncle Jim's logo. I mean, something about Uncle Jim, he's just a little wormy, which I really like. I think that's great. It means you're going to get good worms from Uncle uh, Jim. The logo even reminds me a little bit of the Dune book, The God Emperor of Dune, and if you're a Frank Herbert fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. So anyway, if you need some good quality worms on the internet, check out Uncle Jim's, link in the description, and that being said, let's go ahead and go over these bedding materials and uh, what type of food and how I'm going to add the worms. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that for you guys. So let's do that now. All right. So here sitting on my uh, mushroomy log stump here, I've got pretty much everything you need to get your worm bin started. First off, I've got some uh, shredded cardboard. And this stuff is moistened. I moistened it with some rainwater from my rainwater catchment system. If you don't have rainwater, I, I might hesitate with a new worm bin, just trying to make everything as comfortable for the worms as possible. I might hesitate to use chlorinated water. So if all you've got is city water, maybe uh, fill a bucket up and let it sit in the sun for a day or two to remove any chlorine or chloramine from it. And then moisten your cardboard scraps with that. And I'm just going to go ahead and dump this into the top layer of the worm bin. And then next up, we've got some uh, coconut coir. And basically, this is like shredded coconut fibers. I've actually got a coconut here. And if you're like me and you live in Florida and sometimes you get fresh coconuts, this is basically what you're going to be able to remove from the green coconuts when you're cutting them up. Um, and then this is just a dry husk. You probably will have a hard time removing any coir from something like this. You're going to want to do it when they're green and when you first cut them. So anyway, this is a fresh coconut coir that I've gotten from a coconut. I'll throw that in here. Worms like that sort of stuff. And this bedding material, this is basically what the worms are going to be living in. They're going to be laying their eggs on it. Um, they also, as these uh, carbon-rich materials begin to decompose, the worms actually will consume them as well, and they'll make up a significant portion of your worm's diet. So you want to make sure you start off with a variety of bedding. Um, think basically your browns from traditional composting. You can do shredded paper, um, shredded leaves, basically just dry carbon-rich materials. And you don't want to be too dry, but you also don't want it to be sopping wet. So those cardboard scraps that I added in there are pretty moist. Worms do not like to be soaking wet, but they also don't like to be dried out. So it's all about finding a balance. But as you'll see here, I've got some pretty moist food that I'm going to be adding in as well. And then this coconut coir is basically broken up and shredded. This is uh, 
the kind that comes in a brick like this. And this is commercially available, so I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to pick up any coconut coir. It's a good material to start off worm bins with, and they do really seem to like it. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Then next up, we've got some rock dust. And this is actually a bag of rock dust that came with my worm factory worm bin. I've just kind of been using it. You don't need too much of this. And what this is, is this is grit. So this is like a coarse material that worms, they'll ingest this and it assists them with uh, the digestion process. Think like a gizzard or a crop. Uh, the worms are just uh, using this to help break down food. Because you know, they're little worms, they don't have teeth. So they need some rock dust, some grit. And if you don't have rock dust, although I like rock dust because it does add some trace minerals to your compost as well. But if you don't have this, a really good substitute, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in. A really good substitute is eggshells. You can dry out some eggshells, uh, throw them in a food processor, or a blender, grind them up into a nice powder, and that will also serve as an excellent source of grit for your worms. And then finally, just some additional brown carbon-rich material. I have some uh, gondule seed pods here, so I've been harvesting dried gondules for the past couple days and shelling them, and I was saving the seed pods, and they're pretty big, so I went ahead and threw these into my uh, Vitamix and just pulsed them a few times to break them up a little bit. And then I also have these arugula seed pods. So also my uh, a lot of my arugula had bolted and gone to flower and I was collecting the seeds so I could replant them next year and maybe make some microgreens. But I've saved the seed pods. Those also will make a good, nice dry bedding material for your worms. And if you notice here, I'm not adding too much of any type of bedding material. I like to add just a variety. I think that as with uh, many types of composting, the more substrates, the more variety you can add, uh, the better off you're going to be here. So uh, definitely get creative, add a nice variety of uh, bedding materials for your worms, and they will thank you by producing lots of good compost. And then finally, I've got my worms here, and these are the descendants of those worms. Uh, Uncle Jim's worms that I ordered so long ago, and there's also just some uh, some of the cat some of the stuff from my existing worm bin. You can see there's even a couple of food scraps. There's a carrot, um, and the reason you want to add some of this uh, compost as well is because this is going to have uh, worm eggs in it, and the worm eggs are quite resilient. In fact, a little bit of trivia about the worm eggs is. If you ever do manage to uh, kill off your worm bin by letting it get too hot or uh, too cold, you may actually see them come back. I, I did kill off my worm factory worm bin one time. I left it out over a freeze. All the worms died. It smelled like rotten hamburger. It was disgusting. But I just let it sit and do its thing. And eventually the worms actually came back because uh, one thing that the red wigglers will do is if there is a shock to their system, these little guys experience a lot of stress they go into an egg laying frenzy. So don't despair if you do kill off your worms. As long as you fix the issues in the bin, you may actually see their population come back. So anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and add these guys in now. And I'm gonna let them, oh, there's a couple worms left. Come on guys, time to go to your new home. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of mix all of that up uh, so that the worms and the castings all kind of get evenly distributed. And I'm being very gentle here. It, I'm not sure how gentle it looks, but I'm definitely not killing any of these worms. I mean, they're fairly resistant, but you don't want to pinch them or uh, disturb them too much because they are going to have to get used to a new home here. And then finally, you will want to add some food scraps for your worms to begin eating and composting. And these guys are really in luck because uh, I have a special food here for them that I know they're going to like. This is a bucket of juice pulp. Now, it's kind of gross because it's been sitting out for uh, a few days now in the summer heat here. And so I'm going to be happy to finish with this video so I can go ahead and uh, dump the rest of that juice pulp into my compost bin and not have it sitting around in that bucket. But uh, the worms don't mind. In fact, they will really enjoy this because a little bit of worm trivia, the worms don't actually eat the food scraps that you put in the bin. Uh, the worms, you know, they don't have teeth. They've just got their little, little wormy mouths trying to nibble away at stuff. So they're not gonna walk up to that carrot and take a bite. What they do is they kind of hang out and they wait for uh, molds and bacteria to begin the decomposition process. And then as that stuff starts to break down, 
the worms will come up and they will eat the exudates and the juices that are flowing out of that decomposing matter. So some uh, slightly decomposed and stinky juice pulp is something that the worms are really going to like. And if you find something like pulp, which has been mechanically broken down already, so it's already basically pre-chewed and it's got a lot of surface area, your worms are going to really like that and they will uh, go to town digesting that. So that's pretty much it. I've got the bucket with the worms now uh, set in place with the other buckets in the worm composting system. And now I'm just going to go ahead and snap the lid on. And I will leave these worms be in a semi-covered area and I'm going to let them do their thing. Now it is important where you put the worms. If you live in a hot climate like I do, you probably don't want to put them in direct sunlight. If the bin gets over 86 degrees, that can actually be fatal for the worms. So I would recommend keeping them in the shade. Now, if they get below about 55 degrees, that will kind of put the worms into a state of torpor and they're not going to really be doing very much composting. So maintaining the right temperature level for your bin is very important in terms of the amount of food that the worms can actually process. Ideally, you want to keep it maybe in the 65 to 75 degree range. Uh, that's a good temperature for worms. So likely in the hotter months in the shade. In the winter, if it freezes, I usually will just put my compost bin in my shed and where I'm at, I don't have a lot of hard freezes. So that is enough to keep them safe. And the more matter you have in your bin, actually the more capable the worms are protecting themselves from differences in temperature because they can kind of burrow down to the center of the bin to escape any extremes. Another important consideration while you're maintaining your bin is the moisture levels. So uh, I know we've got these holes drilled along the sides for airflow. That's very important. If the worm bin gets too wet, uh, you will notice that the worms appear unhappy and they may even begin trying to escape from your bin. If that happens, that's a sign that conditions in there are not right. It's easy to manage though. Uh, if you start seeing the bin get too wet, what you'll want to do is just add some more bedding material, some dry bedding, maybe some dry shredded paper, or dry shredded cardboard. And if you notice that the bin is getting too dry, you can just add some moistened bedding or alternatively, you can add some moist food sources. And I know I got these guys started with that uh, juice pulp. Everybody might not have juice pulp. I got that from a local juice shop here at Go Juice. So thanks to Scott over at Go Juice for uh, setting me up with some pulp for my worms. Uh, I got to get you back with some uh, worm tea in exchange. So that's coming, don't worry. And there will be a video to go along with that as well. So if you guys are watching and you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you see any further worm videos that I come out with. But if you don't have juice pulp, some other foods that the worms really seem to like are uh, banana peels, watermelon rinds, mango skins, avocado peels. Those work really well. Uh, you can add some coffee grounds in here. I did a video about that a while ago. If you do add coffee grounds to this, make sure that you are also adding some bedding material, some shredded paper to neutralize some of the irritating chemicals in the coffee so you protect your worms from that. But guys, let me know how this works out for you. I hope that this is a good way to get you started composting. That's pretty much it, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and you can check out this video right here if you want to learn more about composting with worms. I will catch you next time. Andrew from Go Green Compost out.